It's showtime, Rob. We are live. We are live. Welcome. Welcome, Robin. Yes. You all right? Yeah, I'm great. My biggest rival of the year 2020. What a year that it was. was a fun, it was a fun rivalry, wasn't it? It was a good year. It was a good rivalry. Yeah, it came out of nowhere and it progressed and it got serious. And then nearly killed me at the Addington. <laughs> no, thoroughly enjoyed that. I thoroughly enjoyed that. Was, oh, savage. It was good. It was great. That's savage, yeah. Uh, we've got one person watching. Amazing. That'd be Stu. Uh, it's Mr. BJH. <laughs> and he says, Hi, Wayne and Rob. There you go. Hi, Mr. BJH. Hi. How are you doing? Um, I've got two people. There's another person in now. Oh, it's a dream. It's dream. It's li they're literally <laughs> flooding in oh, for us. Yeah, <laughs> uh let's um ask you about your chin what's going on with your chin, chin. and your hair on your chin yeah i've never seen you because um, i'm largely still prepubescent i can't grow a proper beard right but i'm forever winding flood up about the fact he's losing his hair and he's gonna have to shave it soon so we've started a bet because he has a ridiculously big beard if i can grow a beard as long as his he has to shave his head Really? So, How long so have you got? I've, so I've got to grow this to 35 mil long. 35 mil? 35 mil? That's not that. That's, what is that? Like that? Yeah, but see, it doesn't really grow it's down quite, here. It not, yeah. just grows under here, so I'm just going to have this weird beard coming out of here. <laughs> it's going to be quite funny. But uh, it's to totally worth it to see Flood shave his head because he's going to look ridiculous. <laughs> um, what? Uh, and, you, and you know how stubborn I am. I'm going to do it. Yeah, totally. Yeah, totally. <laughs> yeah. Uh, how how long have you got to do it, or has you just got forever? Just whenever, yeah. And you're literally just going to not shave until yeah. it's three and a half yeah. long. Three and a half so, mil, three and a half centimeters. Yeah. Thirty-five mil, so three and a half centimeters. Ah, uh, thirty-five mil. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Nice. it's all right. We've got more people watching now. It's <laughs> This uh, interesting conversation has brought me in. Mr. BGH asks how we are. I'm fine, Mr. BGH. Rob? Yeah, very good. Excellent. Lovely. Lovely. We've got Russ Tizard. Good evening, guys. Good evening. Good evening. Um, Graza 79, evening chaps on conference call with work, but we'll unmute you. <laughs> good, man. <laughs> He's working late. Well, so yeah, we? right. look, at look at us at work. <laughs> at work. <laughs> Dan Hallow, not seen Dan Hallow before. Evening, Dan. All right. Uh, Jeff Smith, good evening, Wayne and Rob. Good evening, Jeff. Hello, Jeff. You right? Did I see Jeff's name pop up on the uh, DGS list? Yes, you did. Yeah. You did indeed. He's going to hopefully be, he's not joining as a member, but he is uh, potentially going to play if he can. He's waiting for a knee operation. If he can get a knee operation sorted, then. He cool. will be all good. So, yeah, he's just going to play as and when. Uh, Ollie H, evening chaps. Good evening, Ollie H. Uh, I've not seen Ollie H's name pop up before either. It's nice to see new names to pop up. There is one. Here he is. <laughs> <Someone's> <laughs> <in the middle. laughs> Sincerely, Spirit Pearson. <laughs> we are looking for a destination to play the 31st of March and... Oliver is asking for Wentworth members to get us in. I literally read an article on that the other day in the Telegraph. Did you miss? Did you see it? Did it pop up? No, I didn't know. No. They were talking about the super rich arguing with the mega rich, sort of. That was the <laughs> you know, sort of the title, and it, it comments on like tiny violins playing for all these mega rich people, upset that they can't play there anymore, and all this sort of stuff. And it was, all uh, them. Yeah, it was quite <laughs> funny. Like. How dare you kick us out of our golf club? And yeah, it's just like, yeah, rich people annoyed at not being rich enough. <laughs> right, an actual question, Dan Hallow. What is your best pint? Go on, you go. For me, um, mine's probably Coors Light. I like Coors Light and Bud Light. I quite I like, like those. I like the old American beers generally. Yeah, I like a Budweiser too. Oh, uh, I do uh, love a good cider. Oh yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah I like it. See an actual scrumpy side, like a proper yeah. cider. You're not talking yeah, the about ones, cider. The sort of flat ones that taste a bit soapy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> real murky. You know, real they, murky. they come in the same kind of container that screen wash does. Yeah, yeah, those ones. 
I I am partial. I did answer this last week actually. I'm partial for an Estrella, Estrella, and a Bira Moretti as well. I quite like those two. Uh, golf gods, evening blokes, evening golf evening gods. Blokes. Lee Popham, evening Capham and Wayne. Capham, <laughs> yeah. <I> mean. <laughs> oh yeah, because you are you, you were his captain. I was thinking, what's yeah, he yeah, done on the, on the golf thing? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Nice. Uh, love light beers and pale ales. Ben Jane says. Yeah. 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 Stuart Anderson. Hi, Robin Wayne. What is your favourite bag? No, favourite club in the bag. bag in the club. Yeah. What's your favourite bag in the club? <laughs> and then, what's your favourite club in the bag, and why? Oh, well, it's always driving for me. Ah, oh, you do like your driver, don't it's you? It's not smashing the driver. It's just, it's just the most fun and it's most satisfaction, especially the good ones. It is. What do you think mine is, Rob? You must know my one. Five wood. Yeah. yeah. And that five wood goes. She's a little five wood. I, I, I swear that's got to be like illegal by now or something. It's getting non conforming. <laughs> yeah, I do like it. it goes as far as other people's drivers. And I'm like, I it nearly drive. kills old ladies. Yeah. Can't believe. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. BJH having a Guinness right now. Quality stuff. Good, man. Stuart, this is Stuart Pearson. Grand smileys for. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jess Smith, Rob, how tall are you really? <laughs> Not very. <laughs> Come on, mate, have a guess. Oh, uh, well, how tall you are? Yeah, uh, five foot two. Yeah, I'd say I thought you'd be silly. <laughs> yeah, I reckon you are five foot seven. Yeah, maybe that push. Yeah, about there. I'm, I'm, I'm around it. Yeah, about that. When you're your height, you don't go around measuring yourself, do you, really? No, not much. I try and stay away from it. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, Wayne's shoulder height? <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Golf God says he's enjoying your hair. It does I actually, it um, yeah, I, I didn't actually have much hair until I was about 28. So when, when I was about 13, 14, I shaved my head then. So I had a shaved head. And mo most of my mates all just knew me with no hair. And then again, much like the beard bet, um, we we're out drinking one night, and one of my mates said, "If you grow your hair as long as mine, I'll shave it off." I went, yeah, all right. And so about two months later, he had to shave his head. That, that was heartache. Was well, yeah, I was just <laughs> yeah. going to say that. And he looked <laughs> awful with a shaved head. So at that point, I then had hair for a while. So when they shut all the barber shops, I just went, "Awesome." Back to uh, back to a shaved head. Back to old school Rob. Yeah, so Soph isn't so much a fan. Is she not? No, she no. Her. she's yes, not no. not a fan of the rubbish beard either. <laughs> It'll get better, Soph, I'm sure. <laughs> Ollie's asking a real question. You are still looking pretty trim. Are you still working out? And did you change your diet much? Good question, Oliver. Um, yeah, still train six days a week um quite a lot of running at the moment um and then I mean, in, yeah, really yeah i mean i've got like a little mini set up in here i've got like a chin-up bar and some dumbbells and bits and pieces like that but generally i run four times a week um and the other couple of days do a bit of weights and a bit of hit workout generally speaking Love diet wise i haven't really changed much Oh, that's a lie. That's I a kind lie. Of, well, no, not recently, but no. So, like, but generally speaking, low fat, high protein. And you have pizzas now, don't you? Pea based pizzas. Pea based, yeah, not cauliflower. That'd be disgusting. <laughs> pea based pizza. God. Can it even be a pizza? Um, <laughs> Mr. P. I'm a big fan of yours and your golf. <laughs> I heard you're a Saints fan. Is this true? <laughs> yes, uh, I'm quite not looking forward to the FA Cup. Yeah. When's that? I don't know. It's got to be coming up soon, isn't it? Well, who what have you got Bournemouth? I've got Bournemouth in the FA Cup, yeah. Really? Oh, that's amazing. Why well, did you have to bring up football? Because football sucks right now. <laughs> <laughs> Not a few months ago, you were like living the dream, weren't you, as a Saints fan? And now it's like back in like late October, we were top of the league. Yeah. And now we've lost eight out of our last nine games. How mental is the Premier League this year, though? It's so tight, isn't it? Yeah. 
Yeah, Literally, it's, it's like, nice. what like sixth to thirteenth or something. If there's like nine points in it, if you, if a team goes on a run, they just go straight up there, and another team just drops straight down. It's insane. Yeah, it is bad, but we're on such a such a bad run at the minute. Yeah, it's not good. Not looking good. <laughs> Hopefully, a win against Bournemouth will uh, get us going again. Yeah, I'm sure. Uh, Lee has asked, what attributes of the DGS players would you like to have and what part of your game would you like to lose? Oh, oh, right, you're I doubt you'd want any of these games. That's an interesting one, isn't it? Yeah, and I'm assuming when people ask DGS players, it's people that feature on the channel regularly, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So like, See, the, the trouble is most of these people would just go, Ash. Yeah, like exactly. Ash, Ash's attributes, they'll do. <laughs> yeah, anyone on the tour would be the same. Yeah. Ash would have Ash just got. Uh, it would have to, probably, it would have to be more temperament than anything else. Um, yeah. And probably take it from Stu or Rich, I'd say. Yeah, both very calm players, very good. Yeah. I mean, Stu's lost it at Ollie a couple of times. He has his own team. <laughs> but no, but generally Stu's, Stu's really good at um, not losing his head and just carrying on. One of my favourite Stu and Ollie moments was at Swindley Forest after that. <laughs> what was it, par five on that tricky green? And Stu's like, don't 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 put it too far or something. He's like, don't patronise me, you cunt. <laughs> Oh, oh, it is like a married couple sometimes it's amazing oh hilarious so funny <laughs> uh, Ben Jane says Rob's don't swear <laughs> I'm trying I'm trying hard. hi golfers as a dude who's five foot seven what we lack in height we make up in doing in dong size no afraid not <laughs> <laughs> Please ask what new shiny equipment, if any, are you going to use on the 29th of March? Uh, I do actually have a new wedge that was delivered Ooh. early January. Because um, when I went and had all my wedges done back in September, um, I replaced my 50 degree wedge. But Callaway had massive stock issues, so I couldn't get the head for literally so yeah so it came in january in the end so it came just as we went into lockdown which was helpful so that's in the bag and hasn't been hit yet and then in april i'm booked in for a driver fin mm, that's exciting isn't it i was i was booked in in february but obviously that got put back yeah have you um, got a club in mind not is it particularly. I do like the look of the new Callaway ones. They look pretty, pretty decent. Um, and the Titleist, new Titleist ones are looking pretty good as well. They do look nice. You're not tempted by the Sim 2 then? Don't like the look of it. Oh, okay. Fair enough. And it's, 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 they've, it's, they've got rid of the weight track as well. Oh, right. Okay. And I quite like the fact that so Callaway have kept, kept the weight track in. And because my swing changes a reasonable amount, um, I like having the ability to change that. So quite often I'll set it up in the draw setting, but then if I get my swing going better, then I can take that back and make it more neutral. Yeah. So I yeah. like just having the ability to do that. But yeah. But we'll see. We'll see what happens when I start hitting them. I've just seen pictures of them so far. Yeah. Being an engineer, you're a bit of a tweaker as well, aren't you? So it's... Yeah. Uh... Yeah, you like all that. Yeah, fair one. <laughs> also, I was going to ask: uh, Does the, the look of the club is that the fundamentally the most important thing at first? Like, if you had a club that performed that really, first, yeah. but you didn't like the look of it, would you stick with the one that was pretty good but love the look of it? I, to be honest with you, I honestly think that you can get most clubs to work. I, I, I don't think that you could say that, you know, one is fundamentally better for you. I think if you yeah. go and get fitted, you can get the right numbers with pretty much any of them. So I think things like the looks of it then make quite a big difference. 
So yeah. also for me, a lot, a lot of it's about the feel of it. I don't like really hard feeling drivers. I like the ones that feel a little, little bit softer, a little bit more forgiving. Yeah. Or feel more forgiving anyway. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Which uh, I've always been good for. Yes, very much so. Jeff says I look like a seventies porn star. <laughs> Probably do. <laughs> uh, golf God, most expensive course you've played. Mine is probably Swinley Forest. I would say it's like one hundred and twenty-five. Yeah, I think mine is as well. Yeah, and we got that on a reasonable deal, really, at one hundred and twenty-five. I don't think I've paid more than that. No, I don't think I have. Uh, you can pay a lot more in the summer, can't you? And that course would probably be. If you played it in the summer, it would be probably the most expensive. It's a couple hundred in the summer, couldn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Lee's asked, have you looked back at the vlogs and thought, why didn't I hit a different shot like Rob in the trees at whatever course it was? That could be any course. Yeah, lo loads of times. Loads. <laughs> but <laughs> the one that specifically reminds me of was our match at um, Thingy Heath, the last one. Oh, was man. it Manning Heath? Yeah. yeah. And you even said to me afterwards, and it's when I was, I'd gone left off the tee and I was behind yeah. the trees. And from where I was, I could go straight up the left-hand side of the trees, but I had to get under branches. And I thought, yeah. oh, that, that'd be all right, I can do that. But from where you were filming, there was a massive gap that I could have yeah. just played straight through and knocked it out. And I just didn't yeah. see it. No, mad, isn't it? Because I, I literally yeah. said that afterwards, and I was like, where are I? There was a huge gap where I was stood looking at you. Yeah, and when you see it back on the vlog, it's massive. This is this massive channel, and I've so I've gone up taking the difficult route. So yeah, that, all the time, all the time. That's the beauty of match play as well, isn't it? Because that was um, I had a shot on that hole. Uh, yeah. Even though I had duffed my second shot, we were essentially there for the same, weren't we? So yeah. yeah. You know, I then went and stiffed my third shot, but that's by the by. If you put yours in play, it makes things different, doesn't it? All of a sudden, I'm playing under pressure as opposed to relax because you fit the trees and I've got a spare shot. So, yeah, funny, isn't it, Mister P? Like to have noticed, though. Yeah, <laughs> uh, bring the FA Cup 20th of March. We'll let you win. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you do. Yeah, Rob, do you think Saints will get relegated from Jeff? No, nah, no chance. No, it may be rubbish at the moment, but we only need about eight points. Yes. And to be fair, I, I think we're far better than a lot of the other teams down there. We're just having a bad run and got loads of injuries. So, yeah, I, I don't agree with that. that. I agree with that. Uh, a high golf looks Dan, Rob's an engineer, electrical engineer here with both five foot seven, both ripped up like Rambo. And <laughs> <laughs> Bless him. Pretty, pretty much twins. Yeah. Right, I'm going to ask you some of my questions. What is the favourite course you have played? It's definitely Swindley. Is it? Just straight away? Yeah, it was just ridiculous. I just loved it. Absolutely loved it. Yeah. I mean, it's there's some. we've played some, some great courses, but I think Swindley just beats them all. Yeah, it was that. Every time you turn a corner, like, oh, look at this hole. Ooh, and then you'd yeah. be like somewhere else going, oh, look at that hole over there. <laughs> like, oh, yeah, can't it was, that hole. Like, it, yeah, it was just everything about it was ridiculous. But even like when you turned up and like the pro shop was amazing. The guys in the pro shop were great. And yeah. then when you went into the main clubhouse, just, just the way they treated you and everything was absolutely phenomenal. They were just like, yeah, have a sit down, have a coffee. Like we've got some members going off at the minute. Like, if you go off at about 11 o'clock, you've got the course to yourself. No one else is out there. It's just just an amazing experience to go with a great course. It was, yeah. It was literally like being welcomed into someone's home, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, so. it was phenomenal. And they were like, oh, we're going to we're gonna close the bar while you're out there. But if if you want some sandwiches or something, we'll make some up and leave them out for you. Yeah, <laughs> just unreal. Someone's it? mum looking after you. It was amazing. Yeah, well, I would love to go back and play that course, especially in the summer or like when the rhododendrons are out and stuff. That would just yeah. be yeah. Unreal. In the summer, it's got to be so good. yeah. Well, one I always forget about and think when we played it, absolutely loved it is Woburn. I always forget about Woburn is amazing. For, yeah, I forget we played it, and then I'm like, yeah. oh, we Woburn, that was amazing there. And Don't that was mind, again. We played Woburn. Woburn. Just yeah, we so played good. it in what February. Yeah, and. Um, 
So when we got out in the morning, there was a frost, but it sort of thawed out pretty quick. But yeah. every single tee, we like stepped up onto the tee and went, oh, this is a fantastic hole. Look at that. And then yeah. after about 11 holes, we're like, oh, I'm bored of saying it now. But it's, it's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> it's ridiculous. It was ridiculous. Yeah, and that part five with the island of trees in the middle with the sort of risk reward where oh, you can yeah. go to the What a hole. That yeah, is just, a I think that's got to be one of my favourite holes. Yeah, I'd agree with that. There's not many where you can just pick a route. Like, yeah, you go that way and you hit to the edge and go for it in two, or you go that way and go for it in three. And it's yeah, sort of yeah. three shots. Like, it's, uh, yeah, great. Hello. Come say hello. Oh, nice. <laughs> get involved. I like that. I like that a lot. Uh, more or less golf. What's the most underrated course you've played? Mine is Tidworth. Yeah, I agree with that. That was yeah, Tidworth's a great show. Um, underrated. I yeah, I don't think I can beat Tidworth for that. To be honest with you, um, it was ridiculously good for something yeah. that doesn't really hold much reputation. No, literally not really heard anything of it, had we? And I, no. I think I, I looked it up and saw it on like top 100 golf courses for Wiltshire, if you like, and it was sort of third. I think it was third. So it was behind like Bowood and the Manor House, and then it was Tidworth. And I was like, well, it must be all right. Those are really good. And then, it, it, you know, it's like five or six positions above Salisbury and South Wales. So I'm like, well, that's a good course. So yeah, it must be all right. And just never heard about it. And when we played it, the greens were running so pure, weren't they? We had amazing weather. And there was yeah. loads of really good, strong holes there as well. No, it was it was brilliant, and I'd, I mean, I'd probably rather play it than Bowood, to be honest. Yeah, I'd agree with that. I'd rather go back there and play it probably over Bowood. I would yeah. like to play Bowood again because I've only played it in the winter, and I, and I, you know, it was wet, so I would like to give yeah. it another because I think in the summer it's probably another different kind of fish. But yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. Harry Golfer says, "Evening, guys. Evening, Harry." Something I want to, um, you're saying about. Um, the handicap thing that they've changed. Oh yeah, the DGS job the other day about yeah. letting non-members carry a membership. Yes. Uh, sorry, carry a, a, an official handicap. Yeah. Don't you think that is massively open to abuse? Oh yeah, hugely. You've got to be able to please. It'd be it. ridiculous, couldn't it? Yeah. Because um, yes. you allow people just go and play with their mates, play their own rules, yeah. and put they, cards they, in, they get a handicap on it. I know. And they were saying like you would just fill it out on the MyEG website. So you just fill out the round after you've done it and that would give you yeah. an official handicap. You'd only put the bad one or some people would only put the bad ones in. You know, yeah. they wouldn't go, oh, I just shot eight over. But if I put that in, it's going to cut me down and I've got an open coming up in three weeks' time that I want to do well yeah. in. Yeah, that's... Uh, it's so open to abuse, isn't it? I can't, I'm, I'm kind of amazed they're doing it, to be honest with you. Well, I kind yeah. of get why. I kind of yeah. get why they're doing it. Um, but yeah, just how, how yeah. the hell are they going to police that? Totally. It's, uh, I think the only way they could do it is if they insisted that every time you turned up to a golf course, you registered that you were playing. Like, say, where every time you turn up, you go to the computer and you have to register on my EG playing the day at this course, bang. And then at the end, they would expect you to put your card in. Even if you didn't put it in, they would just put you down for an NR, so it wouldn't matter. And it's, yeah, still. Do you think you'd have to use the GPS on your phone to tag your location and stuff? That would be the, the only fairest way to do it, but mm. some people wouldn't do that, would they? You wouldn't get you wouldn't get some of the older generation doing that. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's wide it just, open. It just seems mad. And I, I can see a lot of, if you're doing like pro ams, things like that. I can see a lot of them saying they won't accept it. Yeah, I agree. I agree with that. I think it'd have to be you have to be registered to a club and have an official handicap. I think it would be something along those lines. Uh, yeah. I also think I think it'd be bad for golf club memberships. I don't. See, they're saying in the article you must have read it that it wouldn't affect them. And there's lots of countries that do it, and it doesn't affect the memberships. But I can't. I wouldn't say the membership would stay where it is. It would easily drop. There's no way. Right away. Yeah, I mean, so, some of their arguments stack up. Like, for me, 
my membership isn't so much about having a handicap. It's playing competitions every week and yeah. being able to just rock up and play and, you know, all the benefits you get from, from your membership. Oh. Yeah. Um, so it wouldn't, I don't think it'd kill it completely, but I think it would drop numbers. There would be quite a few people that would go, well, I don't need to, I'll go and play loads of different courses. I mean, like you did last year. Yeah, exactly that. I think, I think for me and, and, and people in say my situation where they're thinking like, oh, I really want a handicap because I want to be able to play in pro-ams. I want to be able to do this that, and the other, maybe playing it through opens, but I want to pay and play loads of different places. I don't want to be stuck with that club. With that option, they can just bail out of a club and do that. And, mm. you know, in the past, I've been a member at Crane and, I, and it's for the competitions to play competitions and stuff and to gain that handicap. But I, it is for me to, ha- to keep a handicap. That's why I would be a member. Um, that is a big part of it. So I've got an, an actual handicap. But yeah, if, that, if you don't have to be a part of a club to do that, then you can save. You know, a lot of clubs are a thousand pound a year, aren't they? You can just save a thousand pounds straight from the off and just go and do what you want and keep a handicap, yeah. which is crazy, really. Uh, it's not I crazy. I love going and playing competitions every week. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I would love to. It would be nice to just be able to go and still op- enter the opens and stuff without having to be a member somewhere and you have an official handicap. But like you say, not everyone's going to put in every card um and it's not going to be fully accurate it's going to be all over the place um and it's totally totally open for bandits and which is not yeah. more what you want yeah. ben Danes asks all about the course management but you still always choose to play the impossible shot because when it comes off it's amazing <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's, 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 I tell you, it's funny there's there's a hole up at fern down the eighth hole and uh it's what a 290 yard par four, and one of the guys I play with, he plays off seven, and he just takes a six iron every time. He won't hit anything else. Six iron, middle of the fairway, knocks it on the green, invariably walks away with par every time. And he always says to me, Rob, I, c- I can't work out why you're taking driver all the time. All right, because in the five years that I've been playing that hole, twice I've hit the green. <laughs> And once I got close and chipped in for an eagle, like that makes up for all, all of the signs I've hit the bunker. <laughs> all the the thing is, yeah, if you've got uh, an Ash Koloff playing there, or uh, a Rory McIlroy, or uh, you know a tour pro, they're hitting free woods onto that green, aren't they? They're not laying up. Yeah, they they're going to be hitting free woods into that and just going for it. And that's that's a scoreable hole. So he, it's not that you're right. Wrong. He walks away with par most of the time, and invariably yeah. I walk away with a bogey. Yeah, there you go. But every yeah. now and again. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You never know when it's going to be that day. Hi, Golf Logs. Serious question. Rob, you've made huge improvements in your game. What's the biggest factor that resulted in the biggest improvement in your golf? I knew this question would come up today. I was excited about it. Excited about it. The single thing that's made the biggest improvement. It's it's got to be fitness, I'd say. Do you think your mobility? Yeah, um, fitness, strength, and mobility. Uh, increased mm-hmm. range of movement, better flexibility, stronger. Um, yeah, that's definitely that's that's been probably the single biggest one. But then at the same time, I've still continued having lessons and everything right the way through. Yeah practice to turn um or new irons bought new irons yeah so I, I would i don't think there is one thing there's a lot of factors there isn't there there's a lot of factors and but also i think something that's also made quite a big difference is actually getting to a point um of believing i can play to those scores i think certainly when i was coming down from like 26 my target was get to 18 and 18 was like sensible level get to that um and then you know it's a shot a hole and sort of play from there and at that point um both scott who i have the lessons with and um a pro that i used to play with both said oh you could easily be down single figures you'll get there 
And at the time, I honestly didn't believe them. I was like, no, I can't. But then when I got down to about 15, 14, I started putting a couple of rounds in where I'd shoot like nine over. And then you suddenly go, oh, I've actually put a decent score in there. Like I've yeah. shot a single figure round. I can play to that. Um, and then suddenly when you start believing that you can do that, your targets in the round change and what you're trying to achieve changes. I think that's made quite a big difference because then since then I've been shooting generally between five and 11 over for yeah. most of my rounds last year. Yeah. And I think, I think, and I think a chunk of that was a lot of it was that sort of psychological barrier as well. So it's definitely a mindset change as you come down, isn't there? When you're yeah. 18 and then when you're trying to get lower than 18, you're thinking, Oh God, it's hard without that extra shot there. And it's hard when I lose a shot there, when you're all of a sudden off 16 and you play, two holes that aren't shot holes anymore and you're like oh god i've just got one point on that for a bogey oh that's terrible yeah. once you get beyond that and just think no you can play better than this you can get down there can't you it's, uh, yeah mindset is everything isn't it uh, fitness and mindset if you've got that and, and to be fair like you said with your fitness and your mobility you've done an amazing job if you go back to the woburn blogs again literally look like a different man like something's this like who Who's that guy who ate Rob there? That's ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> a different man. Credit to you. You've done an incredible job. Um, it's uh, But that, that breeds confidence as well, doesn't it? You know, if you're yeah. looking good, feeling good, that gives you confidence. And, again, confidence game. So credit to you, man. You're doing amazing. Uh, Lee Popham. I think that was like Remedy Oak for me, as you would see, see the next hole and think, wow, look at that hole. I do love Remedy Oak as well, by the way. I do love Remedy Oak. It's, uh, it's getting better and better. Yeah, it is. Tricky I sport hope. coaching. Yeah, he is. <laughs> Robbie Hayes, when are we playing Ferndown with Wayne? Just dropping that in there. When they're when out visiting. Like, when, yeah. everybody, when you get your brother out. <laughs> Ooh, how about that? Tricky versus Dewey and Hayes match so little tricky's big brother was uh so I, I went to went to school with steve his big little brother who's yeah old, older than him but shorter than me but he's built like shakiri but he's um he plays, he plays a lot, plays a lot. Shakira first. i had shakiri <laughs> <man. laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's got great now. Um, <laughs> he's he's a wicked good footy player, and so and but he's a sportsman like Tricky, um, and we're always trying to get him to play golf, and he's always been like, oh no, because you know my time's taken up with football and things like that, and he injured his leg quite badly back end of last year, so he's not played football since. And I think he did his ACL, so yeah. I'm hoping now's the point at which we can get him playing golf hopefully he'll stack yeah. off the footy now and we get him out yeah that sounds good leap off and i'm assuming he's talking to your cat <laughs> if not <laughs> just a random bit of threat yeah. mr bjh wants to know what your cat's name is i see quite embarrassed by this so the cat's called lalana no, no. <laughs> i know <laughs> the little shit that went to Liverpool. I see. I've done. I'm sworn now. Oh, <laughs> oh so so well with the not swearing. Brought up the cat, <laughs> right? Never, never name a pet after a footballer because none of them have any loyalty, and they'll just disappear off and make you look like an idiot. Lalana, so funny. So, so ridiculous, funny. isn't it? <laughs> Jeff Smith, what age did you start playing golf, and where was the first place you played? Uh, officially, I I started playing. I was about twelve. Um, no wonder you're so good at golf. But I didn't play for very long. Um, basically, they did a little coaching thing um, up at Ferndown, and they did a Saturday morning kids group coaching thing. Um, and I went down and did that for a little while. Um, mm -hmm. And it was uh, Graham Howe, who's at Forest now. He he used to run it. So when I was about 12, I did that for, I don't know, six months or a year, something like that. Um, and went out and played on what is now the Alice course. Did some on-course lessons with him and things at the time. 
so that was probably the first place I played as well, I guess. Um, nice. yeah. But then at that point, I didn't play any other courses. I literally, I just did that group coaching thing when I was younger, then yeah. sacked it off and went off playing rugby and stuff. And then started playing again in my late twenties and played it like Eiford or something. Yeah. Mine was 25, I think the year I got married. And uh, I think the first, my first round of 18 holes was at Fernand Forest. And then it was like hired clubs and trainers. <laughs> yeah, I think mine was similar, but Iford. Yeah. Uh, try St. Enadoc course as a course like because I fell in love with that course. That is on the list to try and play. I don't think they'd let us on on the 31st of March, though, somehow. Yeah, I've got to fess up something here, Wayne. Oh, you're might, joking. Might, might be playing St. Enadoc later in the year. Without me? That's nice. Yeah. Um, Scott's um, away yeah. day thing that he's running, he's doing Travaux and St. Enadoc. Exactly, so I've signed yeah. up for that. So it's an overnighter. Actually, no, and Perrinporth, they're chucking in as well. No, so, nice. it's, so it's two two nights away, Travaux, St. Enadoc and Perrinporth. Let's move on then. Next one. <laughs> <laughs> we won't talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> During lockdown, I've been so bored, I've decorated two rooms and discovered how to wash dishes. What have you done in lockdown? Oof, what have you done? A ton of work. Work, work yeah. has been absolutely mental. It's it's, it's been mad. Um, trying to homeschool my son as well. That was fun. Turns okay. out I have no patience for teaching maths. <laughs> I'm so bad at it. <laughs> I literally, I think it's something because it kind of maths makes sense to me to a degree, and so I kind of I just understand it. I'm then yeah. trying to explain it to a five year old. And he's like, I'm like, well, if you do this, you do this, you get this. And he's like, I don't get it. I'm like, well, what's not to get? Like, what don't you get? Like, I can't come up with another way of explaining it. I've just explained the same yeah. thing in the same way. Five times. Don't you have it. <laughs> <laughs> so, it. Yeah, I'm an absolutely shocking teacher. So I am so glad schools are opening back up again on Monday. That was the biggest one for me. Yeah. Getting nice. them back to school. Yeah, they've missed out a lot, the kids. Bless them. Yeah, massively. Uh, what do you think about non-members to clubs not being able to play on the 29th? What do you think about non-members to clubs not being able to play on the 29th? So, like, clubs, clubs being members only. Yeah, uh, I understand it. I understand why. Yeah, yeah. because on, on the flip side, for me, um, I want to get out. I want to go and play at the fern down and if it was full up with members taking up tea times that would annoy me because i pay to be a member of the club i want to get out i want to play exactly if you if you've made a financial commitment to a specific club and you've got a 12-year contract shall we say and you turn up on the day that you're allowed to play golf and you can't play golf well mate you'd be fuming wouldn't you? yeah, but yeah. I, I don't think the clubs have got any option to be honest with you no, they've got to be loyal to the to the uh, the regulars because they're the ones yeah. that have essentially kept them going because they've been using I mean, their... Especially as everyone's paid their subs for the last 12 months and in that 12 months probably got six months of golf, if that. Exactly that, yeah. And they were busy months as well. Yeah. Stuart Anson, do you think the new handicap sister is, system is better than the old system? You yes. got handicap, Rob, don't you? Yeah, I definitely think it's better. Yeah, um, I I think it will, provided everyone uses it properly and puts all their scores in, I think it will give a much more accurate handicap, um, and it will more reflect players' current form rather than past ability. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I agree. Um, and I, I, I mean that in the respect of actually people getting higher handicaps. Um, yes. There's a lot of people um, that have played good golf in the past, and because the old system was an accumulative system, you could knock it down, knock it down, knock it down, get it down to a good level. But if you then um, go through a bad spell and you're not playing good golf, um, it takes a hell of a long time for it to get back up again. Whereas yeah. actually with this system, it would bounce up far quicker and drop down far quicker. 
And so I think at any given time, it's much, it will give a much better reference point as to where that person's at. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And therefore make things fairer. Yeah, we, we've we obviously discussed this because we're going to be going over to the new world handicap system in the society because in the society we've got our own handicaps where, you know, people get cut if they performed well. Um, mm. So Rob has kindly done a lot of figures and numbers for me and he's taken on the handicap secretary role um, and he's figured it all out. And actually, when we put the sums together, a lot of them are pretty close, aren't they? They're all pretty similar to what they would have been anyway yeah. um, because we're only using the rounds from the DGS tour other than any of the others. Um, but something that you mentioned was uh, how if we went to a course, because they've all got their own um, – course what do they call them not not handicap because the handicapped index is your number in it so the well, course slope rating. slope rating um because the, like each tee could have different things you mentioned like oh if i played off the whites i could get an extra shot here and against the people that are playing off the yellows like or if i played off the yellows i'd like lose a shot or whatever so i would prefer to you said you'd prefer to play off the whites and let everyone else play off the yellows um i think that's a really interesting dynamic but i don't think that that seems so weird to me because you're I, essentially. I, no, kind of, I think you're right, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah, it's like you're playing a different course, isn't it? And on the day, like all of a sudden, you're hitting a drive from forty yards further back on any given hole, and you just think, "Oh, this is like so weird that you're playing a different course to everyone else. If everyone else is playing the yellows and you choose to play the whites, I think that's like yeah, really weird." And, and, and also for most courses. Um, Getting one extra shot wouldn't be worth it. Not over like having another seventeen holes where you've got to play a lot longer. Yeah, one one hole that makes a difference on, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Good question, Stuart. Thank you. <laughs> uh, Lee, again, do you also put your improvement down to the white golf boots? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> The, uh, the Adidas Code Chaos boots. Yeah, it? boys. Yeah. <laughs> uh, ben James, I would agree with that about the fitness side of the game. If I've eaten well and lost some weight, I'm feeling good rather than being fatigued, feeling down mentally makes a massive difference. To play better, yeah. without a doubt. Without a doubt, if you've got things it's weighing really on your mind, you get to yeah. the back end of a round. Um, yeah, certainly. Previously, when so so when the the kids were young and. I was at my heaviest, unfittest, and had the least amount of sleep. Getting towards the end of a round was always a hard slog, really hard mm. slog. Finish, right? Which, which now seems ridiculous because it's just a round of golf. But gen genuinely, it was hard getting towards the end of the eighteen holes. Mm. I mean, you'll be all right when when it reopens, but I reckon it's going to hit me hard when, <laughs> when we play eighteen holes. I think I'm going to be like fiddlesticks. This is quite. A <laughs> Um, tricky sport coaching has said that will never happen. That must be about his brother playing. Right, getting, getting Steve out and him not playing footy. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Uh, David Den. Whoa, that curly barnet. Thank you, David. I've not seen David Den's name before, so it's nice to have him up. Hi, all. Hello, David. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, tricky sport coaching also says he can't play that well. Horrible swing. Yeah, but. I reckon give him six months and he'll give us all a hiding. He's he's just ridiculously good at sport. It's something about being a tricky. One of those people. Bastards. Yeah. Bloody bastard people. <laughs> and he's also asked, favourite DGS four ball? He's gone right in the deep end there. Right in the deep end. Right there, really. Anyone right in. that's put on the channel, you can have. <sighs> so out, out of that list, you've obviously got Ollie Stew, myself, Westy, uh, Marshy, Sam, Ryan, Robin Downton. Uh, I suppose Simon Wall has Dale, Cole Shoulders. They've all sort of featured. Rich Smith. They've all been on the DJS Tour event. Like, but to be honest, they're all fun to play with. They are. It's a yeah. nigh on impossible question. You don't get a bad group, do you? No. It does. no. no. I've been no, 
it's, I, it's not a proper answer, is it? It's dancing around it. But ultimately, I'd be quite happy playing with absolutely any of them. Yeah, but really, it's me, Ollie, and Stu, isn't it? Oh, of course, yeah. <laughs> Stuart Anderson, what is your dream for ball? Yeah. Michael Jordan, Tiger Woods, Matt Sizio. Poor old Tiger. Yeah, probably not right now. <laughs> <laughs> Might be him at the moment, though. You never know. Yeah, you probably won't. No, I won't, no. Not at all. <laughs> Uh, Lee, what score do you think you'll shoot on the 29th? I'll be happy if it's under 100. If it's any, if it's low 90, <laughs> I'll be well chuffed. Yeah, so when we came out of the first lockdown last year, yeah, I lost two balls on the first hole. <laughs> it's just, Is that a firm um, Yeah, firm down. We teed off on the 9th. Yeah. And, uh, teed off on the 9th, drove it straight into the trees, and then I just... Chucked, chucked another one down there and stuck that one like out the back of the green and into the bushes somewhere. And yeah, it's just carnage first hole. And then it took me about six or seven holes. And then I started figuring out how to play golf again and didn't finish too badly. But I didn't even bother keeping a score because the first hole was so bad. Mm -hmm. um, but then... Later on, we had another shutdown, didn't we? And then it reopened. Was it December? Yeah, November. And it opened in December, didn't it? And it opened up in December. And I went out and yeah. I shot like eight or nine over or something on the first round. So, I don't know. It's going to be awful. It's going to be rubbish. Um, three months. Three months yeah. off, isn't it? It's hard. Yeah. Especially when, you're, when you are actively practising. Like, you actively have... You like, fair, I say fairly often. You don't have lessons all the time, but you always have lessons, and you've always got something to work on. I was sort of just in the midst of a swing change, wasn't I? Before old Manning Teeth, old Thorns, and that, and then I played the Hampshire. And just at the end of the Hampshire, I was like, "God, I think I've got this down now." And now I'm going to have to go back out. Like, what was I doing? <laughs> <laughs> the one thing I did do about a month ago. Um, I bought a net for the garden, and I thought, do you know what? I'm just gonna, I'm gonna get some practice in in the garden, just so that I'm, I'm not just completely rusty when we come back out. Yeah. And the first time I used it, I put a hole in the net, and one of the balls nearly sailed over the fence, but luckily it hit hit a tree and came back. And so I then I tied that up, and then the second time I used it, you know, the, like the bendy fiberglass poles you get for like tents and stuff. It like had two of those yeah. in it snapped one of those and i lost lost a ball about 10 doors down somewhere like i didn't even see where it went just smashed it somewhere down the neighborhood and I went so i sent the net back for being rubbish and uh, <laughs> <laughs> haven't bothered buying another one love it love it check this out junkus dave's in good evening junkus. Hello, dave. another <laughs> one of the team yeah it is they're all in they all come in Oh, I've already done that one, haven't we? Uh, what handicap would you like to get down to this year, Rob? What is your goal, I suppose? What's your handicap goal? I, I don't particularly have a goal, but at the moment, my index is 9.9. .9. I'd like to get it down to 9 or below and actually have it as a sort of proper single-figure handicap because it, it's, it's not really. It kind of is, but it isn't at the moment. It's 9.9, .9, so really it's 10. So, yeah. yeah, so just to get that down, just do what I can with it. If it gets lower, brilliant. But I'm quite happy being in that eight or nine bracket. I think that's a great level for me. Um, I'm just happy to be there. Flipping off 15 in the DGS. I know, it's amazing, isn't it? <laughs> Surely this is still got, still got to win anything, can I? <laughs> Surely this is the year. Uh, I reckon Marshy's looking dangerous this year. Do you? Yeah. Uh, not at all. No He's off of, his, his index is about 16 or something. Uh, Rich has got to be looking dangerous, and Shah has got to be looking dangerous. Yeah. Because their handicaps are raced up. 
Uh, I did like when you had when you had Ollie on here and uh, Shah mentioned about out driving him. So funny, funny how Ollie forgot about that, wasn't it? Yeah, uh, he was livid. He was, it was so funny. What I liked as well is when Ollie was going on about how last year it should be cancelled. And then you piped up and was like, yeah, I agree. And he's like, see, Rob agrees with me. I was like, that's because he lost the world. Nothing to do with you. <laughs> Thought I was backing him up. Yeah. There it is. Uh, Jeff Smith, go to play Hamilton on the 31st. Have any of you played there? It's a good course if it's wet because it drains so well. I haven't. No, I just literally yeah, saw the comment come up and I Googled it. It's a little nine-hole course in, in um, Winchester, I think. Maybe Wiltshire. No, 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 no. I haven't played it, but we are looking for a course. If anyone else has any recommendations that are taking guests, uh, David, then haha, I commented on one of your YouTube posts a while ago. Been following for a while. Love the setup versus the bigger, more commercial channels. That's right, Rick Shields. Mm. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Although he has just raised like forty grand for charity, so you know, good guy. He's a good guy. I would do the same if I had that much bigger following. We've yeah. only got 14 people watching, so what, what do you do? <laughs> Raise 40 quid. <laughs> if we raised 40 quid, I'd be impressed. <laughs> um, yeah, Jeff Smith says just outside Winchester. Lee says four, ten houses down. Uh, Anderson, how many clubhouses are you aiming to hit this year? <laughs> Uh, no, see, you're the one for hitting clubhouses. I just hit players. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I hit. I really hit one, haven't I? Yeah, you nailed the player, which is arguably worse. Yeah, definitely worse. It was on <laughs> there he was having a little putt on the putting green, minding his own business. <laughs> I can laugh off the the hit of the clubhouse. <laughs> that was still uh, the funniest finish to a round of golf ever. Oh, it's such a shame. Walk. Course, laughing that much. It's such a shame we didn't film me thinning it out of the bunker into the clubhouse. I'm so gutted because that was. Oh man! Was yeah, because if you if you hadn't have hit that guy, then you would have been able to film the shot. But because it was like, shit, so sorry to him. <laughs> Quick, let's just get out of there before anyone. Uh... <laughs> oh, awful. Uh, so, what is your most memorable slash favourite golf shot that you have played? I'm not sure I've got one. Um, when we were playing, I think, was it Bridport? Yeah. Was exactly. that, shot? On, that was man. pretty ace. Pretty happy with that one. That was a really good shot. Really good shot. If I had had that queued up, I could have showed that clip, but I didn't. No. Didn't ask him in prep, did I? No. Uh, what is your greatest golfing achievement? Don't have many. I won the Marimba Cup at Ferndown. Marimba? A Marimba Cup. Do you know what a Marimba is? No. I'm excited it's to find like out. It's like a little wooden xylophone, like a glockenspiel. Oh, lovely. It's a Marimba, apparently. And so mm. that's what the trophy is. It's this really rubbish little wooden xylophone thing um, and the competition eligibility criteria is your handicap has to be over 18 it's played on the alice course and the year i won it i think eight people entered maybe nine something like that it's you know right up there in importance um <laughs> And in fact, I, I'm pretty sure it was like nine people because I think I got a bye to the semi-final or something like that. <laughs> it was a match play then. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it was just a match play knockout, but it was, yeah, it's just one of the sort of Mickey Mouse ones that is just put, it's put out on the Alice course and it's for over 18 handicaps. And I used to enter it because very few people did. So you knew you'd get to at least the semis. Yeah, nice. I'm <laughs> saddened that you didn't say DGS Tour match play. Outrageous. <laughs> well, actually, I'm still reigning champion, aren't I, at the moment? Yeah, are you reigning champion? You are, aren't you? Yeah. Got the uh, there. That must mean I currently hold the record for holding mm. the match play championship for the longest. Yeah. Because I've currently had it for about 18 months. Yeah, you probably have, yeah. Yeah, I reckon you have. 
You definitely hold that. And, and won the away day. Oh yeah, that's a huge accomplishment. I can't believe yeah, you. The, the away day is probably one of the biggest ones because that's probably the most difficult. Yeah, two, it's very two day two day against a, a hard field of golfers. Everyone's competitive, aren't they? Yeah, 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 definitely. Yeah. No, that was at the Brabazon, wasn't it? Up at the Belfry. Yeah. Yeah. Brabazon and PJ National. Yeah. Jeff asks, um, Rob, have you ever had a hole in one? Nope, never. Same as is. I've not even had too many that close, to be honest. No, I've had a couple close, but not like. I had that one at, at Lip Hook on the first. Yes. Where, yeah. because of where we were, it looked like it was getting mega close. It wasn't quite yeah. as close as it looked, but from where we were, it looked like it was coming in. Yeah, totally. Uh, Jungle Stave asked exactly the same question, actually, so I'll just pop that up there. He's not just. He also said, especially on such a wonderful course, but I don't know what he's referring to with that. I don't know what he's referring to with that. No. Sorry, James. Sorry, me. Uh, ben James, Rob, do you play Stoneham a lot? As Letizia is a member there, isn't he a fanboying? Oh, actually. <laughs> no, I've actually only played Stoneham once, um, but uh, Letizia had a play in at Ferndown back end of the summer. Um, so I did see him down there and said hello. Followed him. Ooh. Yeah, just, just chased him out of course. <laughs> In fact, I think we played with you that day. Me, Westy, and Lee Irvine. Yeah, it was the same day, wasn't it? Oh, when he was up there. Yeah. 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 Because yeah. they also, you know, when they do the the Legends Day. Yes, I do. I you came to it. one of those, didn't you? Loved it. Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah, yeah. Um, Letizia always plays in that as well. Yeah. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, I remember him playing in that actually because he carried. Who was the guy we had? He was like a big. He was actually famous. Uh, uh, Laurie Lori Sanchez. Laurie Sanchez, yeah. Laurie Sanchez. I remember, I remember being sat after the bar, like, so have you managed some good teams? He was like, yeah, Northern Ireland and or Republic of Ireland <laughs> and Wimbledon. We're like, and like, we're like, oh, yeah, slightly uh, out of our generation. <laughs> yeah. I managed Fulham, didn't he? Oh my God, he's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> we spent all day with him. Yeah. <laughs> and he was like, but like when we were playing with him, he's like, well, my plane to fame was I, I scored in the FA Cup final. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, as if that's the only thing he'd done with his life, but actually he'd done quite a bit. Yeah, hilarious. Oh man, I thought he was like a crap one to be with and then realised, oh, actually, he's amazing. Actually, pretty decent. Yeah, and yeah. the year before I played with Dave Bassett, so I seemed to get Wimbledon every year. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Uh, leap off my thought is a lyric in a song, Marimba. <laughs> <laughs> Who's your tip to win the Masters? Little big tricks. <laughs> oh, yeah, is that it? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> got a little big tricky and big little tricky. Yeah, uh, um, I, I, Jeff Smith, actually, I was talking to him about this the other day, and he's not going to win the Masters. No, he's not. But he did mention Jordan Spieth, and I think that's not a bad shout because he's been playing well. He's been getting getting better, getting yeah, better. Come back. Do you, do you not think the DJ is just going to trounce it again? Maybe because yeah. it was only about what three or four months ago, and he just destroyed the yeah. course. He just made yeah. it look easy. He really did, didn't he? Or yeah. will Bryson get it, get it, get his act together? Who? Bryson. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. I'd like to see him do better because um, he got it horribly wrong last time. <laughs> he really did. He, really <laughs> he got did. it really wrong. But the problem with him was just the way he was talking about the course, wasn't it? Before, and he's just like, "Yeah, this is a par sixty-four for me." Like, well done, not bad. Like straight away, he set himself up for a fall, isn't he? And you just think, yeah. And he just, and it wasn't anything in particular. It wasn't because you know everyone was expecting him just to like bomb it 360 mm. yards and, and it wasn't that he, was, he wasn't doing too badly with his driver but the rest of his game was absolute dog it was just it was. it was rubbish but normally that side of his game is still solid as well and yeah, uh, yeah he was just an absolute piece so it'd be interesting to see whether he can put his game together a bit definitely yeah I hope he does or, or whether his, he, his game just does not work on that course which is yeah. possible. Yeah, totally. It, I, 
I like a Masters to be competitive, and hopefully the crowds will be back there this year. I think it really lacked that last year. Yeah, I think uh, you could see like there are a couple of rookies that did really well, didn't we? That answer lad until the last mm. day crumpled a bit, and the um, the Asian lad as well. I can't remember what his name was. He played unbelievably well, didn't he? And he has the little mm. storm on the top of his backswing, mm. and he played unbelievably well. I don't think those players would play as well with the crowds when there's cheers. Stacked, and stuff. But they, yeah, there are, there's stacks more pressure if you're playing there with no crowd. And it's if you're an amateur and it's your first round at the Masters, you're going to be pooing yourself, aren't you? Yeah, totally. But if there's it's no not, crowds there, then it levels yeah. a lot of that off. Because when you hear the roars, isn't it, on day three and four, and you hear a roar come from somewhere else, as a player, to be able to mentally just block that out and carry on with your own game if you know you're in the running is... Yeah, especially if you're close and you know that that's someone's just nailed a putt or something. Well, you, you probably know where the roar comes from. So you'd be like, oh, that roar's come from the ninth green. I'm on the seventh. Mm -hmm. Who's like four groups ahead of me? That guy, crap, he might have just made an eagle yeah. or something. Yeah. You know, all of a sudden you'd be, yeah, pulling your pants a bit. Uh, Junkless Dave was referring to when I hit the clubhouse at West Hills. <laughs> yeah, that was a hell of a course, he said. No, hell of a course to do it on. It was. Uh, West, West Hill was brilliant. I loved that. It was a real good surprise, wasn't it, that? I mean, it, it was a yeah. costly round, but it was for you more so. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it was nice. It was well worth it. It was great. It was really good. It was the best condition course we played last year. Yes. Right. Yeah. Yeah, it was. It was. It was phenomenal. Yeah, you did an amazing job with that. Mm. Uh, Wayne, are you going to beat Rob this year in the first match? <laughs> I I don't feel confident about it. <laughs> <laughs> but my handicap is fourteen, and you're off ten. So yeah, yeah, about that. <laughs> 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 when, when are you going to put some scores in <laughs> yeah exactly I may never I might be on 14 forever I like <laughs> Talk, yeah. talking about this new handicap system being quite reactive yeah yeah it's about time, get, some, isn't get it? some cards in <laughs> yeah I will have to do that I do miss playing these comps I must admit didn't I didn't play a single comp last year not a single one doesn't need to be comps anymore though does it you can just put cards in whenever you like true very true uh, Lee's asked, has Letizia got a st stalking order against you? <laughs> he should do. should have, yeah. <laughs> uh, ben James, he's an unbelievable goal for Letizia, not bad at footy either. <laughs> Little Big Tricks is um, Victor Hovland. Yeah, I've heard a couple of people call him out for the uh, yeah. Masters. Mm. I mean, I'll, I'll be honest, I don't know a lot of these players. I don't watch much golf, to be fair. I'm pretty similar. I watch the majors usually, always the Masters. Um, I'm pretty then, much mas Masters and Ryder Cup. Yeah. I love, wa love watching those two. Um, I, I, I love a little yeah. glance at um, Wentworth sometimes, BMW. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and I, will, I will zone into some of like the other majors, a bit of like the Open and stuff. I will do them, but yeah, yeah. not. I love Not the Ryder Cup, though. The Ryder Cup wins hands down for me. Yeah, Ryder Cup and Masters, I'll watch like all, all days yeah. and everything yeah. of it, but the others I'll dip in and out. Depends what I've got going on at the time. Which golfer on the Pro Tour do you dislike the most? Mm. This is tricky as we don't really watch it. <laughs> Are there any that I dislike? I would say uh, this is a tricky one because I love. Polter for the Ryder Cup to have him in your team is amazing because he's definitely going to get under your skin. I think mm. he would annoy me if I played with him. Maybe. Okay. I don't know. I think that's probably a bit harsh, to be honest. Uh, yeah. Patrick Reed maybe is a bit of a character, isn't he? I don't dislike him, but he obviously upsets people a lot. Yeah. Um, I can't really think of any that I think, oh, he's a bit of a... Bit no. Of a no. Tricky one, that one, isn't it? Because yeah. you don't really know them. You can't really gauge 
you might I might go and have a round with the important and be like, oh mate, do you know what really change your swing? Just do this and be like, oh mate, that's really helped. Thanks a lot. I bet you though, know, if, if I watched it, there would definitely be people that I don't like, like footballers. There'll be footballers that I just take a dislike to for no apparent reason. Just... Who? Name name three. Name three. Jamie Vardy. Oh really? Oh, he just looks like a right little chav, doesn't he? I just, like, <laughs> <laughs> They're completely irrational ones. They're just like someone, there'd just be certain footy players and I just take a dislike to them just for no real reason. Well, Jamie Vardy's just commented. Um... <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jay Bowden. Even both. Rob, as we're roughly the same height, above average. <laughs> Have you ever cut length off clubs? I've always had off the shelf clubs and always wonder if I would benefit from an inch off. Uh, no, I haven't. No. And to be fair, I've been custom fit for them, everything, and all they've done is adjust the lie angle. Yeah. yeah um, no, no one's ever recommended shortening them. No, that's fair. Uh, ben Jane's happy Gilmore for the Masters for me. <laughs> John Flanagan, love West Hill, two mins from my house. Uh, oh, that's a good one. Which European golfer will do best in the Masters? Uh, Lee Westwood's playing well again. He's still playing well. I'd like to see Fleetwood do well. Yeah, I'd like to see Tommy Fleetwood. I'd, I'd, I'd just, he just seems pretty decent, Tommy Fleetwood. He seems, seems like he's a decent guy. I'd just like yeah. to see him do well. He always seems to, seems to get... Get himself sort of there or thereabouts. It'd just be nice yeah. to see him win some stuff. Yeah. Oh, funny enough, Lee Popham has just literally said that. I'd like to see Tommy Fleetwood in for the Masters. There you go. Or Matt Fitzpatrick. <laughs> <laughs> He's been playing well, actually, Matt Fitzpatrick. Uh, John, have you guys played Warpuston? I have. You and I you played it, didn't you? We did. We played it in the winter again. Uh, I noticed it on your. Mashy Tour, actually, one of the venues. I, don't know. I did think oh, I'd like to play that in the peak summer. Mm. Uh, yeah, but they, to be fair, that list doesn't have any courses you don't want to play, though, does it? No, no, it really doesn't. I was just going through that. List. Oh my god, I couldn't believe how many clashed with stuff in my life. I was just like. <laughs> all I was like, I want to do that one. I was like, oh, I'm on call that day. I want to do that one. I'm on call that day. I want to do that one. I'm on call the night before. I want to do that one. I'm on call the night before that one. <laughs> They've literally gone almost like every seven weeks we'll have an event and it's just fallen after my standby's back. <laughs> so literally there was two that I could actually even do. So I, was like, I was just like, bloody hell. There's, there's a whole load of others that they put on there that are roll-ups as well. Um, yeah. And so the roll-ups you don't pay for. Um, you only pay for guests. Um, and they've got them at, so Manor House is one of those, Cleve Hills yeah. one. Um, there's a whole list of those. So we can look at some of those as well. Yeah, nice. Yeah, I'm up for that. Uh, ben James, that little Asian golfer you're referring to is cool. <laughs> 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 like, yeah. I thought you were just going to carry on and just read it out. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> What's your highest score on a hole? Thanks, Tricky. <laughs> <laughs> Do we even know if that's really, is that the Tricky? Is that little big tricks? Is that actually him? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, nice. Because <laughs> the, the other one's the other one's big little Tricky. Oh, okay. <laughs> Whereas he's little. Big. <laughs> yeah. Oh no, is it? no, is it? Is it little big tricks? Has he changed his? Has he changed his profile pic? Is he changed? <laughs> yes, he is. Yeah, he's just commented saying yes. Ha ha. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was tricky sports coaching just a minute ago, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yes, he knows full well. It's nineteen, doesn't he? Mm, I thought it was twenty-one myself. No, it's nineteen. Stop adding on to it. Because when Stu got his 16 up at the Belfry, I was getting quite excited because I thought he might beat it, but he didn't. <laughs> and it will never be beaten now. No. Old Woken is also a great course. That's one we need to go and play, Rob, isn't it? Yes, definitely. 
a complete the three w's for me and i've seen some photos of it recently or like within the last few months and i was like mm. oh man that does look special it looks really really good doesn't it yeah i think it's like it came up on is it like top 100 courses on facebook or something that group we're in yeah and it yeah and i was just like blimey that looks incredible it just looks <laughs> insane it's so smart. so good yeah uh, Jay Bowden, any opinion on the plan for non-members to get official handicaps from June? Well, Jay, we did talk about this earlier, didn't we? Mm. Uh, we can quickly touch on it again. We think it's hard to police and it will be, um, I think it's going to be detrimental to memberships of golf clubs. Mm. I, I'm, so, I'm not convinced it's a good idea, to be honest with you. I can, I can see what they're trying to do and I think the idea behind it is a good thing. But I yeah. think it's far too open to abuse, and I don't think it's a good idea. I think I think if the uh, proams and opens and things like that insist that you are affiliated with a club and have yeah, because because they, they just won't accept it. Yeah, if they stick to that, then I think it'd be absolutely fine. There's no harm in someone getting into golf and just putting their scores in, getting a handicap, and doing if they're using that just for playing with their mates and stuff, then yeah. Totally. Yeah, I think it's quite nice for people to be able to have an official handicap because there are places like, you know, like I couldn't take the DGS tour to Parkstone because you have to have official handicaps for everybody. Mm. And the same um, at Lip Hook, they wanted yeah. to see our handicaps, didn't they? Um, and so, most places, I mean, like Ferndown say you have a handicap limit. I don't, they're not very good at checking it. Um, yeah. And I think I think a lot of clubs have it, not very many clubs. Uh, regimented enough to check it but like lip hook were weren't they lip hook were right on it yeah they were they were really on it um so in that respect i think this is actually this is actually elaborated on what we were saying earlier yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh in that respect i think it's good because you can get to if you take that handicap and other courses accept it when you go in there because essentially you could but what stops you from just writing any old score in there? <laughs> but that's that, that's golf, isn't it? Uh, at the end of the day, yeah. that is actually golf. You know, you could go out with your mates. Yeah, a lot of golf's open to abuse, isn't it? It's... Yeah, it is. On a on a Sunday medal, be playing with three mates, and you could all make up your scores. It wouldn't matter. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And you could all win, and happy days. That's what golf is. It's a gentleman's yeah. thing. Yeah, right. So, yeah, you'd like to think if someone goes to the effort to cheat on Perman, they're an asshole, aren't they? But um, <laughs> <laughs> it's like, hopefully there's not many people like that out there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I think, it, uh, thinking about it now, I think it's it's good that, you know, the likes of, in our tour, there are people that aren't members, so like Stuart Johnson and Dave Tennant yeah. and people like that, they can all get an official handicap and then I can go and book a round at Parkstone and be like, we're playing Parkstone this week. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. As a special round and everyone can play because they've got handicaps. Yeah. So that's good. Yeah. John Flanagan, where are you playing on the 29th? We're not. We're going to play someone on the 31st. Um, but I'll, we don't I'll know. I'll be playing at Ferndown on the 29th. Yeah, you'll be playing at Ferndown. I will not be. I will be working. Whatever uh, happens, I will get a tea time somehow. Yeah, you, you'll be fine. <laughs> you'll be fine. Uh, little big tricks. Dream set of clubs if money was no option. I have no idea. <laughs> Whatever's suited to me, uh, amazing yeah. things. To be honest, I love my irons. I love my, they're not APs, are they T100s? I like my irons. They're, they're the modern day type list. So they are what I would have. Um, I would change all my woods. So I'd go through my woods and change them. But I would get fitted for whatever worked for me if clubs were, if money was no option. But it is, so I'm not getting anything. Yeah, and I'm not sure there are any clubs that are um particularly more expensive than everyone else that i would massively covet if that makes sense like psg pxg used to be quite expensive they're not ridiculous anymore when you compare everyone yeah. else's prices um and i don't think that there's anything about them that would make me desperately want those because they're expensive um yeah no, there isn't. I don't think there is a particular club or set of clubs out there that I hold back from buying because of their price. Yeah, if it's right for you, it's right for you, isn't it? 
Apart from putters, money. maybe. Putters, money right. Is not you use it, Rob. That's the beauty of it. No, it's just not. <laughs> 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 not what I'm getting at. No, but like um, with putters, for example, like some of the Scotty Camerons and stuff, for example, are like four or five hundred quid. I wouldn't pay that for a putter. So yeah. I guess that would change my set. But when you're talking wedges, irons, drivers, and things like that, um, you know, if you go in for a driver fitting, most of the drivers you hit are going to be four hundred quid a go. Uh, exactly. And then you, you've got a few that will drop in at 300 quid. So it's not yeah. necessarily the money side of it that's making the decision. No, that's right. They're not. Um, they're all similarly priced, aren't they, these days? So if you're going for a fitting somewhere, you get what's fitted for you, don't you? And then yeah. that's you done. Yeah, it's, it's not like you'd suddenly go, ah, oh, well, actually, there's these irons that are made by this japanese company that no one's ever heard of and yeah. it will cost you five grand for a set of irons i'd love a set of those yeah that's if right. they are out there i don't know about them so <laughs> exactly, yeah it's like um you don't go to a, a driver fitting with 250 quid in your pocket and go yeah let me try everything and then go I've only got 250 quid. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh lee old woking was the course where i copied wayne's west hill shot on the last <laughs> <laughs> Jay Bowden said sorry for asking the same question, but <laughs> it was we had a different answer. So it's fine. Yeah, yeah, got an elaboration on it. Um but one for you, Wayne. Go on. Right. When you go out and play, what's more important to you? Hitting um hitting great shots or your score? Uh so when when you like, yeah, I know what you it, mean. Are, are you when you go out? Is it more important for you to score well, or is it more important for you to hit good golf shots? I think if I went out and had a round and hit good golf shots and scored well, I would no, take that. that one, no, no, see, that's, that's not. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 If you if you hit if the I good golf good. shots, your score is going to be all right. Yeah. But what's yeah. more important to you? What gives you the most satisfaction? Yeah, so if I went out and played and I hit good golf shots but didn't score brilliantly, I would take a lot of positives from the good golf shots. If I went out and played regular golf but scored really well, I would take the positives from like, wow, where did that come from? And that actually happened at Haythrop. That was my best round, six over gross. And I don't know where it came from. I literally finished the round. I played with Carl and I was like, Mate, I've just shot six over. He's like, what? I was like, yeah, I don't know what's happened there. And it was just like a combination of a few green and regs, a few up and downs, um, and a few whole long parts. Like, it was just a, one of those weird days where you didn't really do anything amazing. You didn't really do anything wrong, and you just hold some stuff. Mm. I don't know what I think whenever I'm playing golf, I'll always just try and take the positives from whatever it is. If I'm playing badly, but other people around me are playing well, I'm just there for the company and I'm enjoying not being at work or just enjoying playing golf. So there's a really tricky one. My mindset would change as my round develops. So if I started off and let's say I nailed a good tee shot but made a double bogey i'd be like mm, that's a bit annoying and then the next hole i hit a couple of good irons but still made a bogey i'm like okay looks like i'm not going to be scoring today let's just work on my game so yeah it, the decision can sort of be made early to what i'm going to be focusing on in the round if that makes sense hmm. so it but just, but what, what gives you the most satisfaction like what what do you enjoy the most a good score or playing good shots Probably playing good shots, I think. Mm. Probably playing good shots. Because if you if you have that shot that you, I don't know, hit from 200 yards out to four foot, you can think about that for months. Like, that'd just be like, remember that shot I hit there? Um, whereas, like like I say, with my six over gross at Hayfrock, which is my best ever round, so it's in my head as my best ever round, can't remember a lot of the day and the shots that I played because nothing was special. There was just good golf happening all the time. So the special shots 
are more memorable, aren't they? Mm. I think. I think for me, I certainly I get way more satisfaction out of hitting good golf shots yeah. than shooting a score. Yeah. Um, I mean, score, invariably, it? The, the better your golf shots are, the better your score gets. To be fair, so that there is a link between the two. But for some people. The focus is purely score and how you get there really doesn't matter. Some people are just totally score focused and yeah. that's their only goal and they don't care. Um, yeah. But for me, I get way more satisfaction out of um, the actual shot and hitting good shots. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with that. I would I would say, yeah, deep down. Because I think good scores, they just creep up on you and you just go, oh, yeah, I'll just shot that, have I? Brilliant, amazing. Yeah. Um, yeah yeah good question i like that better than any of the bloody subscribers <laughs> uh phil gardner wayne rob did you see in your local news that fernand forest members got thumped by another yeah, goal yeah. only about slow player who might have been one of the famous moaning fern members <laughs> i did i did see it there was something on the echo website a week or so ago um because mm -hmm. they were in court and Basically, this guy was playing with his mates and there were some old boys behind him. And from about something like the second or third hole, they started moaning that they were taking too long. And all the way around, they kept moaning, kept moaning. And then at one point, um, let's, let's say it's like the 13th hole or something, um, they shouted down the fairway at them to get a move on. So one of them turned around, walked back, had an argument with him and lumped him. <laughs> So one of the like, two golfers hit the old guy. Yeah. <laughs> well, he had it coming to him, didn't he? <laughs> In my I thought he well, sounds like a miserable old bastard. Yeah, <laughs> people just like we're all out just for a round of golf, chill out, just adjust your play, your pace of play accordingly. I know if they're super slow, it's annoying, but just take a little bit more time over your own parts and just you know, yeah. as long as they're not ridiculous, you know ridiculous yeah, okay. stuff like that really does annoy me when you've got people that are just impatient behind you yeah so it's, it's a bit much going and lumping an old man but you know <laughs> yeah yeah i wouldn't turn to violence but <laughs> yeah now uh, which course is on your most to play list st george's hill is it that's your I've most for ages yeah oh, yeah, that actually St. George's Hill is one of the ones I can do for the match. Really. Well, let's do it. It's on. <laughs> Just need to see the price now. <laughs> Don't worry about that, be fine. <laughs> I'll hold off on the vid buying the new video camera before uh, <laughs> the price of that. <laughs> um, um, but other than that, it was also St. Enidoc for me. Um, yeah. But so, I've got that booked in for later in the year, so I've got that one coming. There it go, just, mate. Just, just to remind you that I'm playing that one. Get over it. Get over it. No one cares. I'll send you a photo. <laughs> yeah, send on a deck. Send on a deck. <laughs> and send on a deck. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, obviously St. George's Hill. Uh, Sunningdale as well is up there. Yeah. It's pretty yeah. Pretty hot, isn't it? So, uh, you know, you've got to say it's got to be there, so. Yeah. Although Marshy said it was a bit rubbish. Yeah, it's funny that review, isn't it? It's more than a fan of it. Only person I know that's gone, that. that's not very good. Yeah, I didn't like it. Literally, it's number one in the whole of the top <laughs> of the world quarters. And yeah, Marshy's like, yeah, underwhelmed, really. Yeah. Have a bad round, didn't we? <laughs> uh, Girls of 79 says, Lee Poffin Lift Go. Hobridge is where I learned to play in lovely course. When did he say something about Hobridge? Unless Woking was used to be called Hobridge, maybe. Could well be, because Graza is up that way. Uh, Junkless, who would you like to caddy for you? That's a good question. Oh. See, part of me wants to say Ollie. <laughs> Oh, no way. I could never have Ollie as my caddy. <laughs> Absolutely just horrible. Just for amusement. I have actually had Mr. Pearson caddy for me once in a competition, mm. and uh, he was a fantastic caddy. 
Absolutely was amazing. Yeah, he did some real good, real good tips and just made me play very sensibly. And there was things that I'd be like, oh, I'm going to hit a five iron over those trees and get down. And he's like, just hit an eight iron, just hit an eight iron. And then I did, and it like flash it and be like, hmm, good call. Like, and yeah. there really good things that he walked around with me and told me it was spot on. I came second though, so it wasn't really, wasn't that good. <laughs> Could have yeah, been probably want, wants Ollie to do it just so I can make him carry my clubs and clean them for me. And he's going, hey, Ollie, <laughs> give me an eight iron. That's dirty. Sort it out. <laughs> yeah. Actually, I want a seven. <laughs> Changing your mind. Oh, get it right, Ollie. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. Uh, not sure if this is covered earlier, but Rob, precision golf or golf principles? Good question. Precision Rob. golf. Precision golf. Precision golf. You know, they are wicked good. Golf principles is the Basingstoke one. Isn't it? Yeah, and now Brockenhurst as well. Brockenhurst. Yeah, that's cool, isn't it? Mm-hmm. That they're just a bit closer. Yeah, precision yeah. golf are up in Surrey, so it is a bit of a bit of a track up there. Um, last time I went up there, Colin Montgomery was just picking up some clubs, a little hello in the car park. He seems to think they're all right. Yeah, he probably knows. Um, <laughs> Junkers Dave, I have a new PSG driver waiting to be hit. Lovely, awesome. very nice, very nice. Well, that's a lot here. Uh, John Flanagan, will Rob be getting a SIM2 driver? Uh, probably not. Um, mm. That's not to say I've completely discounted it because I haven't hit it yet. But, um, yeah, as I was saying earlier, they've taken away the weight track, so there's limited adjustability on it, um, which kind of makes me want to prefer, like, the Callaway or, or the yeah. Ping that still has the weight track in them. They're cool. Like, I like tinkering. You do. These are always fun when you get random questions like this. Dream cars, guys. Ooh. Mine would be a Mustang. Oh, okay. Like old Mustang. Like, you know, the one from, uh, did you ever watch that film with Nicolas Cage? What was it called? Gone in 60 Seconds. Gone in 60 Seconds. Yeah, See, the GT Shelby 500. I mean, that was... Oh, what a car that is. Yeah. I, I love love the old American muscle cars. They are wicked. I used to love the old Dodge Charger. Like in the first Fast and Furious. Yeah. Dom Toretto's one. That. Yeah. They're just ridiculous cars. They're amazing. But then at the same time, I've I've had weird thoughts in the last year or so. Of wanting, weird to buy, no, of, of wanting to buy like a Toyota Supra twin turbo or something like that. Uh, that'd be fun. Because they, they were wicked cool, but they're from like the 80s. Um, yeah. Didn't Hardacre have like an old Supra? Didn't he have a Toyota Supra or something? Once? No, he had a Sleeker, didn't he? Yeah, maybe it was, yeah. He had a Sleeker. But the other one used to be the old, um, oh, what was it? There was a Mitsubishi. Uh, was it Mitsubishi GT, I think? Right. It was... Oh, I think it might have been a GT. But again, it was one of these like Japanese ridiculous ones. And it was from like the early 90s. Um, yeah, the Mitsubishi Evo. Always used to love Mitsubishi Evos. So part oh. of me wants to buy like one of those stupid Japanese 90s cars. Just Yeah. That was back in the days of like Colin McRae Rally, wasn't it, with the Impreza? Yeah. yeah. I always preferred the Evo to the Impreza. And... Yeah, part of me wants to do it just to fulfil that sort of childish. Yeah, I bet they wouldn't be that much either, really. No, they wouldn't. In comparison to some cars, it'd be good fun though, and the the exhausts are just the noise is amazing. Isn't it? Yeah, I mean they'd probably largely be disappointing nowadays, but you know. Well, they would be like, oh, I prefer my Volkswagen. Thanks. But as a teenager, I wanted wanted them, so I'm going. Yeah, yeah. I've got one now. I've done it. All right, tick. Just put that yeah. in the drive. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Lee, the tailor-made iron seems to be going well, Rob. I certainly do. I, I love them. I think they're wicked. Yeah. Stuart Anderson saying, hit good golf shots every time. Agree. Jeff Smith asks, what make irons do you have? Tailor-made. Yeah, so I've got a combo set of irons. So I've got the P770s 5, 6, and 7, and the P7MC 
um, eight, nine, pitch and wedge. Boom. There you go. Uh, Jeff, good chat, Wayne and Rob. Night to you both. Night, night, Jeff. Sweet dreams. Oh, nice. Uh, ben James, there's no better feeling or buzz you get when you hit the perfect shot. You've just run through your head standing over the ball before you hit it and it pays off. Unreal feeling. Yeah, I do agree yeah. with that. Yeah. Same happened to me at the DGS event. Don't think I hit the ball well, but hold lots of putts. Did. Got up and down a lot. Loved winning, but wish I could remember some great iron shots. He got up and down from ridiculous positions and hold some long putts to win that day. To beat me, of all people. <laughs> Little big tricks, dream course to play. It's got to be Augusta, isn't it? Yeah, it's the impossible one to play, isn't it? So you've yeah, got to take the course to play. Yeah. This is hilarious. John Flanagan, who played off 14 in my golf day, shot one under at St. George's Hill many years ago. <laughs> <laughs> you see, don't don't let John get a handicap without being a member of a club. It'll be ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> Agreed. I think I play off about fourteen or something. Oh yeah, yeah. shot one under St George's Hill. Yeah, it's an official fourteen. Look at my phone. <laughs> yeah, <that's right. laughs> uh, Graza seventy nine. Old Woking equals Hobridge. There you go. Who knew? Who knew? Woking. Sorry, Graza. Yeah. No, Lee. They have a little own chat. I have three W. But in Lee, nice. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to stay 3000 GT. Yeah. 3000 GT, that's the one. Yeah. Good memory, Dave. Yeah. Uh, Leap off a Mitsubishi Evo 10, Rob. Yes. Evo yeah. 10. Immense. Great. Uh, Wayne, are you still doing the things from your golf lesson video? Body turn and hands, exiting left. You started to really flush it. I'm hoping to. Haven't played golf in three months. <laughs> You're definitely still going to be trying to do it. Uh, yeah, I. Uh, Ham the Hampshire course, it really started going well. It went well at Manning's Heath, and then it. I was going to say at Manning's Heath, it was working. Yeah, and then it went off the boil for Old Thorns for some reason. Had a real, not great iron striking day that day. Um, but then, having said that, I still shot eighteen over. So even though I wasn't flashing it, it still wasn't like an embarrassing score. You know, it was a very respectable score. So uh, being that it felt like a bad day. And then and it, wasn't, back, it wasn't particularly easy conditions either, was it? No, it wasn't. And then uh, back at the Hampshire, I shot 10 over with it. And um, yeah, I was sort of flushing it. And I even managed to bring it into the driver as well at, at the Hampshire, which I was really, really pleased with. There's definitely something I'm going to be trying to uh, instill. I feel like uh, it makes me lose less balls. Definitely. I've, I've lost I've had less three off the tee since I've been doing it. It's definitely sort of brought my game down like that. Um, yeah. But I'm not getting any height, which is something I need to figure out. But at the moment, it's just learning the move, getting the move right. And then um, hopefully I can uh, have a little tweak and sort the sort of the height of it. Uh, Evo's all day long, Tommy Mackinnon. <laughs> no, no, but. It was such a good game, the Colin McRae rally game. Do you it was brilliant. It was so good. So good. Uh, I hit Rob's bag at the DGS golf day. <laughs> who got the penalty shots for that? I can never remember who gets them. I don't know. <laughs> Here he is. All right, little llama. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I think that's the great thing about you vlogging. You're seeing the great shots. Do you agree? Yeah, every one out of ten vlogs we do, there's a great shot. Yeah, every now and there's a great one. Keep replaying it. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I should. Uh, John Flanagan's coming in to defend himself. Single figures a long way off from his <laughs> uh, Going to get an official handicap as soon as we're out of lockdown and competitions are back on, so then you can win them all with your band of handicap. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, ben James, notice in your videos where when you keep your swing slow and smooth rather than forcing it, you're so much more consistent. I am, yes. The I think at Old Thorns, I was trying to squeeze it up and I was trying to hit it too hard. Uh, I think that was my issue there. I'd like to be able to just go hell for leather at a golf ball and swing as hard as I can and it do what I wanted to do, but I just don't seem to be able to do that. So I have to uh, try and rein it in and be smooth. 
see, I've started trying to hit the ball harder at the moment. So yeah. what a lot of people are doing in, it's a deep bow thing, isn't it? Yeah. Well, in in November, I started doing the um, speed training with the old uh, was it super swing golf or whatever they're called. Yeah. Um, did that for six weeks through November. Came back after lockdown, and I was definitely hitting the ball further. Um, the guys that I play with all noticed that I'd picked up like 20 yards on my drive. Yeah. Um, suddenly, like the guys I was playing with that are playing off like scratch and plus one, suddenly I'm up with them with my drive. And they, they all noticed it. They were like, hang on a minute. You've, you've picked up a bit of distance here. Um, when we then went into lockdown again, I stopped it. And so I've just started doing it again, ready for end of the month, basically. Nice. So that's, that's, that's the one thing I'm sort of doing now is just doing that um, three times a week. Yeah. Hit the ground running. I'll be scared. I'll just be chilling out with my five wood 30 yards behind you. <laughs> what is the golf ball of choice for this season? Go on, Rob. Probably one for me. Always. Uh, whatever's on offer and a good ball. <laughs> I'll, I'll be honest. I've, I've chopped and changed a lot. Um, I like things like when Callaway did the Truvis, I liked that. Um, then when they did triple track, love that. I think triple track's brilliant. Um, the, one of the biggest problems I have is with the actual Callaway ball itself. Um, and just about everybody that does any kind of ball testing um, has all found that Callaway are massively inconsistent in their manufacturing. Um, and Tightlist are way ahead of everybody else in terms of consistency, of, of like manufacturing consistency. Um, and so the, the likelihood of the ball affecting your game is minimised with a Pro V1. Yeah. Yeah, and I will go for anything that's on offer because I don't want to pay 40 quid for a dozen balls, basically. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Stuart Anderson's asked the most memorable shot you've played. Oh, you, it was Bridport, wasn't it, for you? We yeah, I, I think so. Yeah, I can't think. I'll tell you what, there is one other from... No, New York one, T-Shot was another memorable one. Well, there's one from years ago, um, and I was playing at Iford, and there's a par five coming down the back, like the other side of the river. It's quite a long one, and you have to drive like over a tree, but then your next shot to the green is between trees. Yeah. Um, and I'd, I'd hit a decent drive, and then I hit like a five iron or something and stuck it on the green to yeah. like four foot or something. Yeah. And I was, that, that was, that's what I remember, because that was like the first time I got an eagle. Yeah, nice. Actually, funnily enough, Iford is the first course I ever made a birdie. And it must have been like, I want to say it's like seventh hole. It's just a par four, a river down your left-hand side, par four, and then the green just tucks over on the left-hand side. Yeah, and yeah. That, yeah, that was a drive down the middle and then literally put to a foot, just like... <laughs> just under the ditch, across the front of the green. Uh, no, there's another one. I know that is seven, isn't it? So maybe it's after that. Maybe it's on the. Well, the kind of you, you, you do I mean, it's all that. The whole green's before. just cut off, and the ditch just cuts across the front. Yeah, no, it's not that one. That's par five, isn't it? The one before. No, I think that's a four. Think that's a four. Oh, is it? Then maybe it is that one. Yeah, maybe it is that one. Yeah, but yeah, I literally stiffed it to a foot, and I was so excited because it was just such an easy tap in for a birdie, and that was my first yeah. ever birdie. That was, that was fun. Uh, ben Jane said, "Send Loana off to Brighton in a cat box." <laughs> yeah, she's injured. <laughs> Another good question. People know you too well, Rob. We <laughs> <laughs> yeah. answered this like three times now. <laughs> Yeah, so Precision Golf opens up again on the 12th of April. I'm booked in on the 29th. There you go. So, yes, he is. <laughs> <laughs> Although, having said that, when they spoke to him last time, they were like, we could probably get two yards more. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, no. When when I went up there back in, what, August? Yeah. And 
I hit my driver and my three wood, and he just went, "Yeah, no, they're absolutely fine. No need to do anything with them." He was like, "If if I if you, if I did anything with it, I could maybe get you two or three yards, and it'll cost you four hundred quid." And I went, "Yeah, all right. I'll see you in January when the new ones come out." <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Uh, Junkers, how many golf balls do you carry in your bag? I reckon I've probably got about 35 in my bag. Yeah, tons. I, I have no confidence in myself. I have loads in there. Same. I won't even, I wouldn't even leave my bag like 20 yards away from the tee box and walk. You know, when you've got to go back past your bag? Yeah, I've done it a couple of times. So whenever I do, I think, oh, am I going to regret that? <laughs> no way. I can't do it. I can't do it. I'd rather carry my bag and trolley over a tea box <laughs> put it down, <laughs> to keep it with me. <laughs> yeah, I reckon I've got about, about 20 balls in my bag, something like that. Yeah. Uh, Phil says, Rob, you still remember at Ferndown? I'm playing it in your open weeks, May and August. Great course. What do you rate as the hardest hole? Good question. Hardest hole? Um, 11's pretty tough. So 11 is the par four. I can hate 11. <laughs> I cannot play that hole. I mean, when you think you play 10, which is a par five. Yeah, and then you turn around and play eleven, which is the same length coming back the other way, and it's a par four, and yeah. it invariably always plays into wind as well. Yeah, um, so that's tough. Um, but then twelve afterwards is pretty difficult. Par three as well. It's a very slim green bunkers both sides. Yeah. Um, and six, six is pretty tricky just because of the the elevation and getting up the hill. But yeah, probably eleven. I'd say eleven. It's a bit of a I bugger. see there's a, a poll at the moment for would you like to see a Sky Sports event at Ferndown? Yeah, yeah, I'm not sure what that's about. I mean, that's got to be like a Euro Pro event, hasn't it? Sky Sports usually sponsors the Euro Pro. Well, one that's thing they definitely got is in, did you say 2022 or 2023? Um, sorry, I'm about to sneeze. This is one of those just, just tickling. It's, like, it's, it's not actually developing into a proper sneeze. It's really annoying. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah i think it's 2023 they've got the amateur championships there okay something like something like that that i saw they put the other day so i don't know whether that's anything to do with it maybe maybe lee's asked if you could play anywhere internationally oh intentionally i'm assuming he means internationally <laughs> <laughs> well, if i could accidentally play augusta <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, Augusta. There's another one, a Spanish course that I would really like to play, and I feel like it is achievable to play. Uh, I want to say it's like called like Della Rama or something. Valderrama. Valderrama. Yeah, I'd like to play that. PJ Catalonia looks pretty tidy as well. Yeah, yeah, and I'd also I'd love to play that Phoenix course. That'd be a cool one to play the stadium course. Yeah, I'll tell you what, the one, I think, actually, one of the ones I really, really want to play uh, is called Something Cliffs, and it's in, like, Bulgaria or something. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, um, there's a few cheeky ones like that, isn't there? Yeah, it's called Something Cliffs, and it's literally, it just goes on, along the cliff line, and the, the scenery and stuff is absolutely obscene. And there's some greens that are literally right against the edge of the cliff. Yeah. There's a lot of courses in Ireland I'd like to play as well, actually. Like, uh, probably more than Scotland, I think. Like, I'd like to play. There's one right down. Is it Old Head? Old Head, one with the lighthouse right down at the bottom. Yes. Looks yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'd like to play there. So, yeah, I like it when we get asked the same question again. Could we come up with different answers? <laughs> <laughs> think of something else. Yeah. Ben James is off to bed. We'll have to get to bed soon as well. Thank you for tuning in, Ben. And thanks for your question. Yeah, cheers, bro. Uh, best shot I ever hit was coming down the last night of Saturday. I needed to hold my second shot on a par 440 yards. I stood over the shot and something inside me told me I would do it. Come on. One bounce, side spin, straight into the hole. One time I've ever screamed on a course. This guy is an absolute bang. <laughs> I'll play off 25. <laughs> <laughs> Can't believe I won. <laughs> uh, does we featured on the television Euro Pro Tour? Was it? Yeah. Yes, it was. yeah. Yeah. Oh, here we go. Douglas Dave's Thraxian. He, he's filling in all my mental blanks. He actually is. 
literally are on the same wavelength. Uh, Lee Cotton's even jumping in as well. Fassie and Kiss. Look at your group. Your group is teams in. unbelievable. <laughs> Here you go. John Flanagan played old head when it first opened. Bloody tough in the wind. Shot too over gross. <laughs> <laughs> right. I can get back to my questions that I'm supposed to be asking you anyway, because we've been, can you believe we've been like on? For this long hour and 44 minutes i'm amazed people are still watching we're down to like one person left it's just 11 people you and, you and ollie have given up haven't they yeah they're long gone they're long <laughs> what is your favorite youtube channel could be any kind of channel other than dgs yeah other than DGS. Um, txg oh yeah you do like that don't you uh txg are brilliant um very good if you like the more technical side of clubs, club fitting, and what you what you can do with it. Um, some of the testing things they do is phenomenal, and demonstrating um, what you can do with particular adjustments to clubs and things like that. Um, and it's very much the thing that I quite like about it is you can watch most of Mark Crossfield stuff where he says, oh, this is marketing, this is rubbish. Look, these are all the same. And then they completely disprove all of his nonsense um, from, a, from a scientific standpoint. And that's what I quite like because um, they, they are very sort of techie about it. It is very sort of science -y. being an engineer. I kind of like that side of things. Um, and, yeah, I think they, they're great for that, really good. Yeah, nice. And insanely um, good golfers. They're both off about plus two or something. Yeah, that's ridiculous, isn't it? Mm. Junker Stay says he hold his second shot on the 18th of Pine Ridge with a shot. Net one on a par five. <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing. It's amazing. <laughs> and Phil Gardner, my best shot was a hole in one on a par four. Unfortunately, Green had two holes cut. And I went to <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, that's amazing. <laughs> Three, five, well, the chance, I'm like... <laughs> I love it. <laughs> uh, so my last question to you is what is your favorite DGS golf vlog vlog? Do you have one? Pro, uh, Cambly Heath's got to be right up there. I love that one. one. So much fun, that one. Yes. Um, Hockley was a really fun one as well. Uh, yeah, Hockley. Yeah. I'd like to go back and play that again, actually. I mean, Ho Hockley was the, the course surprised me with how good it was yeah um i think we had a lot of fun the actual match was very very good yeah um there was some great stuff on there like Stu getting his eagle and things it was yeah, yeah it, it that one had a bit of everything it's good fun one it? it was a good and, and it went down 18. went down 18 a lot of funny ollie moments um like missing the putt on 17 is hilarious <laughs> There's a real funny one as well. Is it you made? Did you make a par on a par three with a shot, and then Stu hold like a massive putt for birdie to half the hole on a par three? Yeah, yeah. something like that. Yeah, it was. It was a really good one for that. Yeah, it was a good match. But Camberley Heath was just downright good fun right the way through. It was really good fun. Really good fun. Right, we've got uh, what, 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 what? Graz of 79 said, Good choice, Rob. I'm assuming that is to your golf principles. Uh, yeah, and Stuart Anderson, yeah, precision golf. Uh, Cambly Heath vlog was the one that got me into DGS. I think a lot of people have stumbled across the DGS because of Cambly Heath, it's one of my most viewed, I think. Yeah, Old Thorns has gone like for that. Yeah, it's really it. gone mental for views. Like, if I can get there in time, yeah, nineteen hundred views it had. Because, because I, I I don't understand how the whole um, YouTube, sort of YouTube yeah. thing works, how the algorithms work and stuff like that. But that Old Thorns one, when you were showing me the charts on it and stuff, it's just mental. Yeah, absolutely ludicrous. So, yeah, so Old Fawns had 1904. Campbell Heath has had 1964. And it's been, been out for a lot longer. Yeah, like, yeah, Old Fawns is racing up the charts. It's mad. Crazy. 
couple more. Uh, Lee Popham, I thought Cumberly Heath was a great vlog, and I stumbled onto DGS with Wayne playing at night in Heath. They are horrific. What would you have ever subscribed when you watch those videos? I have no idea. <laughs> Such bad ones. I do want to go back. Night in Heath is actually one that I'd like to go back and do a full course lot because I think it'd make for a good course lot there. I, I like Night in Heath, and it's a good little course. Yeah, it's a good little track. A good little I say track. little, it's not little, is it? Oh, it's funny. It is little. I think it is little. It's uh, They've got some amazing holes, but yeah, it's, it doesn't feel like as long as Fern. I'd say Ferndown's longer. It's like a tight, it's like a tight, hilly version of Ferndown. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it does feel like that. It feels, it feels sort of bit compact, but yeah. it's good. There's some holes where the heather can make it brutal. Mm, lots of blind shots as well. You don't really know where to go and if you've never played it before. So definitely want to yeah. do that. Anyway, hour and 50 minutes. That is the longest one we've ever done in my entire life. That's you, it? Yeah. Um, thank you so much, mate. It's been interesting getting uh, into yeah, your brain. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Don't want to be in there. Yeah, I love it. That was good. And, uh, let's hope we can find a venue for the 31st of March. We'll find somewhere. We'll definitely get out. We we will indeed. All right. Cheers, mate. Thank you very much. Much appreciated. Much love Cheers, to man. everybody watching. Only eight people left, so time to tune out. Cheers, Cheers mate. Man. Take Cheers. care. Bye. Bye.